On behalf of the local spiritual assembly of Santa Monica, I would like to welcome you all to a lecture by Dr. Nader Saidi. We are so happy that we have you again at our center. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. The um, title of his talk is Fire and Light in the Bob's Tablet Proclaiming to be the Qa'im. And before asking you to come, I want to also announce another uh, talk by Dr. Saidi at UCLA. Um, the UCLA Iranian Studies Program, we have a bilingual lecture series on Iran. And on uh, Sunday, February 28 at 4 p.m. at UCLA, um, Dr. Saidi is presenting a talk which is in Persian, Shekl Giri Tachayol Irani as Nehzat Bab, Ain Babi, Dar Ayane Nasekhot Tavarikh. Keki as Ketab Haye is one of the uh, very important historical um, sources of uh, Qajar period, 19th century Iran, and he is giving this talk at UCLA. I have some flyers later if you would like to take some. Uh, and this flyer is handout actually is for tonight's talk. And after his talk, we'll have Q&A. So please, Dr. Saidi, thank you. Unfortunately, I can't see your face as well. I'm uh, really happy to be here. Uh, Santa Monica and Santa Monica uh, Spiritual Assembly has been always very kind and gracious to me. And uh, even though Vito and I, we don't live in uh, Santa Monica technically, but always have uh, treated us as, uh, as a person belonging here. Um, the topic of uh, today uh, is uh, a tablet of the Bob, uh, which is extremely important, historical, uh, from the point of view of historical significance, it is very important, but also in terms of content and substantive discussions, it's extremely significant. Um, it's a tablet which is not well known, uh, none of it is uh, translated, um, but it is, uh, like the writings of the Bab, complex, complicated. The language is uh, complex, the contents and ideas are complex. Uh, writings of the Bab, uh, because they are very complex, very rich, that's why people don't study it. That's why scholarship with regard to the <laughs> writings of, of the Bab uh, is not uh, the norm, it's very uh, rarely done either by Baha'is or by few Babis or by uh, non-Baha'i scholars, uh, really the writings of the Bab has not been uh, uh, researched and, uh, and addressed. But the reason for that is not that um, uh, it is not significant in terms of content. It's the exact opposite. It's, it's so rich and so complex that it's not easy to study that and requires uh, uh, really uh, immersing there. So um, I, uh, I go directly to the topic because uh, even if we can discuss a few aspects of that, that would be great. I gave you a handout and on one side of that is a tablet of the Bob uh, with the handwriting of the Bob himself. So this is a very uh, beautiful, uh, sacred uh, work. And uh, as you can see, the handwriting of the Bob is, uh, is uh, uh, extremely uh, beautiful. Uh, he normally uh, 
writes a lot of things in a very uh, short um, space. And this is no exception to that. This is the entire tablet. And then on the other side, I have made a provisional translation of most of it. About 75% of that tablet I have translated here. But it's my translation. It's purely provisional. Um, and uh, I'm sure it has to be revised uh, and uh, edited uh, uh, in the future. So what is this, uh, this tablet? This tablet is called um, a, a tablet of qa'emiyat, tawghi qa'emiyat. Uh, and qa'emiyat means, uh, I don't know, qa'emhud. Uh, uh, Qaimate, uh, namely a tablet indicating uh, that he is the Qaim. Uh, historically, this tablet is extremely important because it is part of an uh, intentional, systematic, deliberate plan by the Bab to enter a new stage of his revelation and therefore to publicly announce to the people. Uh, a new definition of his station, of his intention, and his message. Um, uh, this is a, a, a summer of 1848. Summer of 1848 is the time that three events happen uh, at the same time. The, the, they all happen within a month. One, of course, is very famous. The, gathering at Badasht, the Badasht Conference, in which Tahereh makes uh, a very uh, revolutionary, heroic act in which uh, challenging patriarchy becomes announcement of emergence of a new religion, a new dispensation, abrogation of previous tradition, uh, Islam. Uh, and the, that unity becomes part of the Babi and future Baha'i faith, namely the symbol of the new revelation becomes emancipation of women. It's very interesting that in the world, which is Islamic world, which, which is uh, very traditionalistic, uh, extreme expressions of traditionalism uh, and loyalty to Islam takes exactly that same form, namely veil of women uh, becomes a symbol of being Muslim and, and affirming tradition. In the, uh, uh, in the Badasht, it was, of course, that same, again, the question of gender uh, and a station of women is uh, becoming the symbol, but it's a symbol of uh, uh, proclaiming not just liberation for women, uh, but uh, liberation of uh, humanity from varieties of forms of bondage to uh, tradition. Uh, that event uh, is uh, part of a deliberate pattern of events. And that's why the planning of, the, of Badasht is uh, primarily by the Bob. And if, if one doesn't know that, it is very easy to make mistaken interpretations of the events at Badasht. If you assume that events at, at Badasht were just random decision that a few Babis would make, uh, and they, they, they had conflicts with each other, Qudus was against Tahereh, Tahereh was against Qudus, and somehow uh, it becomes resolved, and so on, uh, that assumes that the Bab had no role in this uh, uh, historic event, uh, which is impossible. Uh, uh, Badash was part of series of events which deliberately is planning to proclaim the uh, emergence uh, of, a, a, uh, of a new revelation uh, and publicly declare the station of the Bob in a new way. The other two, what are the other two? One is the um, examination, interrogation, conversation uh, of uh, um, of uh, clerics uh, and the prince uh, in uh, the city of Tabriz uh, with the Bab. They brought the Bab to Tabriz in that same summer 
and they had uh, some sort of uh, dialogue and conversation, uh, which uh, is extremely, again, important because the Bab uh, very uh, explicitly uh, uh, in uh, this uh, uh, particular gathering uh, announces that he is the awaited hidden imam, he's the awaited qa'im, and he defines that as being a, a new uh, prophet and beginning of a new dispensation. Now the third event is this particular tablet, the tablet that we are going to discuss. This tablet was uh, written uh, if most likely the night before the uh, Tabriz meeting with the ulama and the, and the prince, Nasreddin Shah. And the, in this tablet, the Bab chooses one of his disciples. His name is uh, Sheikh Ali Torshizi. Uh, that the Bab gave him the title Azim. Azim means the mighty. And Bab gives this mission to Azim through this tablet that he has to go and everywhere uh, proclaim through this tablet that the Qa'im has come. So, um, the, the tablet of Qa'imiyat becomes part of uh, these uh, varieties of events which are taking place simultaneously and the purpose is to uh, more explicitly unveil uh, the nature of the new uh, spiritual civilization which is emerging. It's important to know that the writings of the Bob uh, within the first uh, three years before he goes to Maku, to mountains of Azerbaijan, it writes in a way that it appears uh, that he's saying that he's the gate to the hidden imam and that he is not a new prophet. It, it gives that impression. Now, if you read it, of course, carefully, it is very clear that his station and his claim and his consciousness is far superior to that. But he intentionally uh, writes in a way which is not very threatening to the traditions of the people. But when he goes to mountains of Azerbaijan, immediately in all his writings, he starts to affirm that not only is the Qa'im, that 12th Imam of the Shia Islam, but also he is the point, he's the truth of all uh, prophets, manifestations of God, and, the, and the, he has brought a new religion. The uh, age of Islam is over in terms of its laws. Uh, but that he is the same as Jesus and Muhammad and uh, Moses and uh, Zoroaster and all of them. He has come, uh, that truth now has appeared in a new way. And the, the, the book Persian Bayan, of course, is the most important text, which is written in the early parts of uh, his stay in Maku. Um, yet, he did not make this public. For one year, although in his writings, he's affirming that he is a new manifestation of God, very explicitly and so on, but he did not make it public. It took one more year uh, that in the summer of 1848, Persian Bayan uh, was uh, written already at the end of summer of 1847. But one year after that, he makes this plan that it is time now. Uh, to do this. In his writing, he says a lot of things ab about these particular timings and so on. Uh, I'm tempted to share some of that, but then we, we won't get to anything with regard to this tablet. In terms of the date of this tablet, there are some confusions among the scholars. Uh, one of the greatest scholars on the history of the Baha'i faith and the writings of the Bab, of course, is Fazel Mazandarani. And uh, he, had a no he has a number of works which are very important. In one of his works, which is Zohurul Haq, uh, volume uh, three, which is all about the Bab and uh, the, the age of the Bab, uh, what he says in that work uh, is that among the 
tablets of the Bob is a tablet of Qa'emiyat, and he says that it was written uh, at the end of the Maku period, uh, and uh, written uh, um, in the honor of uh, um, of uh, Azim, uh, and uh, command him to proclaim this uh, event, coming of the Qa'im, to everyone. So, uh, Fazil Mazandarani here is indicating that it was uh, written at the end of Maku period. Yet, in his other work, Asrarul Asar, volume four, uh, he says, uh, I read you the original Persian, و توقیه معروف قائمیت سریحه عمومیه در حومه تبریز به سال 1265 هجری قمری خطاب به ملا شیخ علی ترشیزی تو پرانتز شیخ عظیم صادر شد و he's saying is that this tablet of قائمیت was uh, written by the pump uh, uh, around Tabriz city of Tabriz in the year 1265 uh, and the address to Sheikh Ali Torshizi. Problem with this dating, the second one, uh, this becomes two years after Maku. So that his points are contradictory to each other. But the second one actually is correct, with one minor change. Namely, in the year 1265, Bob was never in Tabriz. 1265 is one year before his uh, martyrdom, he's in Chehrik. The time that he comes to Tabriz is summer of 1848 or 1264. So he meant 1264, somehow it is written 1265, uh, but this is not what he meant. So in, here he says that this was written in Tabriz. That's the time that he comes to have conversation, interrogation, examination of the Bob by these clerics and political figures and, and so on. And this is the correct one. In the book, uh, one of the early Bobby books is called Noqtatul Kaf, which has always been a matter of lots of controversy. Um, the author of that book refers to this work and says that um, says that the Bob wrote this for Azim and ask him to proclaim it to everybody. And then it says, uh, look at the mercy and compassion uh, of the Bob, that despite all these oppressions and injustice against him and against Qudus and his uh, 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 disciples, um, his companions, um, he still wants to uh, guide them and, uh, and tell them about his station. Uh, from the way Noqtat al has written this, uh, it implies that he thinks that this is written much later, namely after Qudus was martyred, which is absolutely not the case and so on. Noqtat al has been a matter of a lot of debates, some correct, some incorrect. Uh, but I think the most important, Abdul Baha didn't like Noqtatul Kaf. Um, but the main reason that Noqtatul Kaf, uh, this early uh, Bobby work, history work, uh, has a lot of problems, uh, is not that it is fabricated, it is not fabricated. Uh, the main problem that nobody has talked about it yet is that the author of this book knows nothing about the Bob and his writings. And so everything that is written in this uh, history book, Edward Brown has translated the whole text in, in English, um, is uh, m speculations of a person who brings his own ideas and calls it Bob, and Bob is a man so on. And his dates are all inaccurate. He says that the Bob was in Maku for three months. But those historical errors are not that important for me. What is important is that this person who has written this had no sense 
absolutely anything of the writings of the Bob and Bobby. And that's why I, I believe that Abdul Baba particularly didn't like this particular uh, work. But at some time, this aspect of this discussion of Nuhtatul Kutub has to be addressed. Now let's, uh, now uh, the tablet as I mentioned in one side of it is the handwriting of the Bob. And if you read it, um, it has some of the typical characters unique to the writings, handwriting of the Bab. It's only in Arabic. Uh, and one of them that you can immediately tell if something is written by the handwriting of the Bab or not, is that the words for Zaleka, which means that, this versus that. Zaleka, the way the Bab writes it, uh, he adds one alef, one a, the way it is pronounced, za, za, z, a, the way Arabs write it, almost everybody writes it, that a, a, a that Aleph is non-existent. It's Zal, Lam, K. But the Bab always adds, when, whenever he writes this word Zalika, it's his style. He adds that. And the, the line first, second, third, fourth, the fourth line, it begins with the word Zalika. There are a number of Zalika in, in this. And if you look at it, you can see that, even though it's short, that Zalika has Aleph. Okay, um, first, you see that there is one part of this uh, tablet that I have put the, uh, I have typed the original Arabic. And uh, you might, think why I have done that. Uh, let's uh, start uh, reading the text, and then we read, uh, we begin just the beginning parts, then we go to the end, and then I address why I put that in, in original. Uh, it begins by God is the most manifest. In many of the uh, places that they have written this book, they have uh, written as if the Bab is saying, Allahu Athar, God is the most pure. But the, it is Allahu Azhar, God is the most manifest. Even if you look at the original, at the top, 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 you can see that it has a point. It's Allahu Azhar. Because he's declaring the revelation, the manifestation of uh, God, so he begins by defining God as the most manifest. Uh, and this word that we call it, like, you know, because Baha'u'llah, uh, man yuz herullah, he whom God shall make manifest. The word, uh, which is zuhur, uh, in Arabic means both revelation, manifestation, and also victory. Uh, in the Quran also is used in the same, le yuz herahu ala dine, um, anyway, I have to remember before and after. Talking about the Quran to make Islam le to, uh, It doesn't mean to make to make it manifest, to make it victorious over all religions. And uh, in the writings of the Bible, also it is the same way. He whom God shall make manifest is also he uh, who. Uh, God would uh, uh, make him victorious, or his victory would be uh, revealed, and so on. Anyway, I have to control myself not to go through these sort of details. Uh, and then he says, "O oh, creatures of God, he's proclaiming, asking, addressing everybody. O oh, creatures of God, read ye all, believe ye all, and all attain certitude. He's asking to go through three stages, reading this work uh, and uh, recognizing the truth of that, and then at the same time trying to understand it so that from faith you would go to certitude, from reading to faith to uh, certitude. It's that first word at the top. And anyway, and then the um, the, uh, the text uh, starts to begin, he is the most 
uh, exalted. Um, the address of this text, his name is Ali. Yet, the Bab gives a title to him, not in this work, but in his other works. He calls him Azim. Azim means mighty. Now, this is very interesting. The Bab, to varieties of his disciples, gives usually particular titles. But these titles, uh, almost in all cases, with some exceptions, are one of the names of God. For instance, say, Yahya Darabi calls him Wahid, right? Wahid is one of the names of God, namely the one. Uh, Yahya Azal also, he called him Azal. Azal means eternity. It's one of the names of, of God. Qudus, for instance, his name is Muhammad Ali, but he calls him Qudus, one of the names of, of God. It's, uh, Baha'u'llah is Hussein Ali, but he calls him uh, Baha, which is one of the names of, of God. Qahir uh, becomes, uh, Qahir, one of the names of God. It's a, it's a typical pattern. Um, now, the problem here with the uh, address of this work, Sheikh uh, Ali Torshizi, is that his name is already one of the names of God. His name is Ali. Ali, people might think that it is the name of the first Shia Imam, which is. But for the Bab, whenever he discusses this word Ali, including his own name, which is Ali Muhammad. He always says that this Ali is the name of God. In the Quran, all the time, God is defined as Ali. Uh, Ali is one of, means exalted, the most exalted. Uh, and uh, so, the Bab, the way he sees his own name, Ali Muhammad, Ali represents divinity, reflection of God, and Muhammad represents servitude and prophethood. And so his name for him represents the unity of divinity and servitude, which for him is the assertion of the point, the truth of all manifestation. And for him is the truth of all reality. Everything which exists is combination of this divinity and servitude. Namely, we have a particular essence which separates us from others. This is our servitude. And yet we all have something in common. That's revelation of God, which is within our heart. That's our truth. That's our divinity, which is a sign of God. And so the Bab sees his own name as a symbol of the structure of reality, a structure of everything, including um, prophets and, and so on. So uh, Sheikh Ali, already his name is one of the names of God, yet the Bab gives him a title, which is again one of the names of God, because Sheikh Ali becomes numerically equal to the word Azim. This was prevalent in Iran all the time. Everybody did that, that uh, letters would have a numerical value, and therefore different words would be related to different numbers, and then those numbers would become in turn equal to a number of other words. And so different words, which at first they don't have any connection, this way become connected to each other. For example, Iranians, uh, I don't know, when they had constitutional revolution, uh, in order to uh, celebrate that, they were created the word Adl Muzaffar, the justice of the King Muzaffar Din Shah. But this Adl Muzaffar numerically is equal to the year that the uh, constitutional uh, revolution succeeded, if, if I remember, 1324. Uh, this was a typical part of Iranian culture. It's not something unique to the, to the Bab. It's no longer uh, practice, but this was common. Now, Sheikh Ali is equal to Azim. But why he gives this word Azim to him, to this Sheikh Ali? The reason is that in the Quran, a number of times, when God is defined as Ali, it follows by defining him as Azim, Ali yan Azima. Frequently, Quran defines God as Ali yan Azima, Ali who is Azim, the most exalted, who is the most mighty. And for that reason, nothing that the Bab does is arbitrary or accidental. Everything has 
purpose and meaning and hidden uh, principles, ideas. So his name is one of the names of God, but then he uses the equivalence of his name, numerical equivalence, makes it equal to the description of that same name of God in Quran, Aliyan Azima. So he defines him as Azim. So let's uh, now uh, start with it. He is the most exalted. The reason that he chose it, uh, this word, he's the most exalted, is because the addressee, his name is Ali. Uh, and so he's using, defining God also in that way. Now why he calls his, uh, his uh, disciples one of the names of God? It seems a strange thing. And the people in Iran who were, who were writing about the Bab, uh, and uh, of course they wanted to reject and ridicule the Babi faith, this was one of their things, that these Babis, they give the names, sacred names to, to themselves. And that's one of the most beautiful aspects, the heart of Babi faith, which is really the foundation of Baha'i faith. And that is the idea that according to the Bab, the truth of everything is God. I just mentioned that, that everything consists of divinity and servitude. So there are aspects of my being which separates me from you guys. That's my servitude. But then there is an aspect which we have in common. That's, that thing is our truth. That thing is our true identity. And that's revelation of God. And the Bob has come to create a new culture, a new consciousness in which we see everyone and everything as nothing but revelation of God, as mirrors of God. And therefore everything should be defined and treated as sacred and beautiful and endowed with rights. This is the idea. That's why he gives these lofty titles of God, is emergence of a new culture, a culture of equality, of sacredness of everything, not only humans, but also. And that's why he creates a new language, which I won't go into that. Then he begins with the beginning statement. In the name of God, the most inaccessible, the most holy. In the Islam, uh, there is a beginning. Uh, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Uh, and the Bab in his early writings he would use that. When he goes to Maku, he changes that. And usually it, this is the one. Sometimes he uses other things, but usually this is the one. Uh, and uh, uh, we come back to this in a moment. Now after this, he says one particular paragraph. And the entire that paragraph I have written the original. So I read it fast, and then I come back. Why I have written the original here? God testifies that there is none other God but him. His are the kingdoms of creation and that of revelation. He quickens and slays. Then he slays and quickens. He is verily the ever-living who perishes not, who holds in his grasp the kingdom of all things. He calls into being whatsoever he wills through his decree. He is verily potent over all things. Why I have written the original here? Now go to the last paragraph of this same tablet. The Bob says, command all the people to recite day and night the verse that we revealed in the beginning of this book, that they may be sustained by the food of their Lord. At the end of the tablet, the Bob orders, commands uh, people to read that first paragraph, that first statement, uh, day and night. In the letters that Azim wrote to all the Babis and to non-Babis, proclaiming the station of the Bob and the accompanying this tablet of the Bob, he says that every day the Babis have to recite this particular verse 361 times. But I believe that is his own addition. The Bob just says that every day, um, uh, morning and night, uh, this uh, tablet should be read. 
why it is the case that within the, this entire tablet, this particular part of the tablet, he makes it uniquely significant that everybody um, uh, every day has to recite this in the Bobby dispensation. And what it is that it is saying, unfortunately there is no, not time that I engage in analysis of this statement. I wish I had and um, we could devote the entire time to that, but we can't. But this is symbol of a very important spiritual truth in the entire writings of the Bab. Let's go back to the Persian Bayan. Persian Bayan, among other things that it does, it tells us that all spiritual truths are present in the Persian Bayan. He says that Persian Bayan is the word of God, and the word of God is creative, and so it is creating a civilization. So the civilization, the new civilization, all the source of that becomes Persian Bayan, right? But then he says everything which is in the Persian Bayan is present, that whole truth in the more condensed fashion, is present uh, in uh, uh, a, a few paragraphs together. And he mentions that paragraph. And then he explains that in this paragraph, uh, there are 19 names of God which are mentioned at four different stages. And in a sense, there are four statements, each and together, these four statements contain 19 names of God. Then he says that everything which exists in this, in these four paragraphs, also exists in this one paragraph. And then he mentions that one paragraph. That one paragraph is this paragraph. This paragraph that you have here, which I wrote the original uh, Arabic, also typed the original Arabic. According to Persian Bayan, is the essence and summary of the entire revelation of the Bab. And then he says, he goes one step further. He says, everything which is here is present in the first um, phrase of, of his work, which you have it over there, in the name of God, the most inaccessible, the most holy, which is equivalent of Islamic, Quranic, in the name of God, the most com compassionate, and so on. Now, without having time to engage in that discussion, why this is the case, this is telling a lot of important principles of the worldview of the Bab. What the Bab is telling is that ultimate truth of all reality goes back to this statement which goes back to that phrase. That phrase consists of 19 letters. In uh, Arabic, of course, not, not in English translation. And uh, his point is the same thing that he always mentions it as the equivalence of all things, and 19, and then 19 and one. And that this one becomes the point, which becomes the source of all things. And this is always in the writings of the Bob, in so many different fashions. This is another expression of that. And his basic point is that he defines all reality as all things, which happens that in a symbolic fashion, the word all things, koloshe, becomes equivalent numerically to 361. But 361, then becomes multiplica multiplications of 19. 19 times 19 becomes 361. So the truth of everything becomes expressions and reflections of 19. And yet the truth of 19 becomes one. Why he makes the truth of 19 one? He makes a very interesting play. The word for one is wahed. Wahed means one. But the way you say Wahed, V-A-H-D, something like that. Like when we say one, one is, is equal to one, right? But at the same time, one is O-N-E, right? Now, if you take the words for one and take the letters of that, add them together, it becomes 19. Wahed is V-A-H-D. 
H and D. And these together becomes 19. So the Bible is saying that the truth of 19 is one. And that's what he always emphasizes. He says that I am myself, together with the first 18 converts, 18 letters of the living, we are the first 19. But this first 19, you have to look at it as one. And he emphasizes it all the time. He says the letters of the living are not important in terms of their own particular personalities or essences or characters that they have. Mullah Hussein or Godus as you know, particular people who happen to be male or this age and so on are not important. What is important, he says, that in them you should, you should see only their truth, their divinity, which is reflection of the Bible. 